Hello everyone, I'm Tim, and today we're going to dive deep into the fascinating world of karate pioneers. These are some of the unsung heroes who paved the way for modern karate, before it became the flashy Hollywood style martial art that we know today. Now we won't be talking about Funakoshi, Miyagi or Mabuni today, so sit back, relax and let's take a trip down memory lane to meet some of the founding fathers of karate. If you're a fan of karate, then you know that there are few names as revered as Sokon Matsumura, the Bushi. This legendary figure, who I like to call the Lion of Okinawa, was very prominent in 19th century Okinawa, and his influence is still felt in dojos around the world. So what's the story behind this karate titan? Let's take a closer look. Sokon Matsumura was probably born in 1797, during a time when Okinawa was an independent kingdom, which meant that the island was full of skilled martial artists. Matsumura, however, was a cut above the rest. From a young age, he trained with the greatest karate masters of his time, honing his skill and developing his own unique style. Matsumura's reputation as a warrior and a philosopher quickly spread, and he eventually caught the attention of the king of Okinawa. The king was so impressed by Matsumura's skills and character that he appointed him as his personal bodyguard. That's right, the Lion of Okinawa was once responsible for the safety of a king. While Matsumura's martial prowess was certainly impressive, he was also a creative force. He developed many kata, which are formal exercises that are still used in the traditional karate dojos today. His kata were known for their efficiency, power and grace. They became a cornerstone of the Okinawan karate tradition. So what does Sokon Matsumura's legacy mean for karate today? Well for starters, his kata are still used in traditional karate dojos all over the world. They are a reminder of the power and beauty of the art and they help to connect modern practitioners with the deep history of the martial form. But Matsumura's influence goes beyond just the kata he created. His life story his philosophy and his approach to karate have inspired generations of practitioners. The Lion of Okinawa may have lived centuries ago, but his legacy is still felt in the hearts and minds of martial artists today. Sokon Matsumura was a true legend of karate, a warrior and a philosopher who left an indelible mark on the art form. His skills, his character and his creativity helped to shape the Okinawan karate tradition and his influence is still felt today. So the next time you step onto the dojo floor, remember the Lion of Okinawa and the legacy he left behind. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your belts because we're about to take a close look at the life of Kanryo Higaona, the legendary father of Nahate. Get ready to be inspired, amazed, maybe a little bit scared. Hey, it's karate after all. Kanryo Higaona was born in 1853. And from a young age, he showed a talent for karate. But he wasn't content to just be a big fish in a small pond. No, Higaona had bigger ambitions. So he packed his bags and headed to China to study Kung Fu. And let's just say that he wasn't exactly booking a trip on a luxury liner. This was the 1800s after all. Higaona endured a long and arduous journey to China, where he spent years studying under various Kung Fu masters. When Higaona returned to Okinawa, he brought with him a wealth of knowledge and experience in Kung Fu. But he didn't just copy what he had learned, he combined it with his own native karate to create a new style that emphasized close range combat and circular movements. Today we know this style as Nahate, after the city where he lived. Now, Nahate quickly gained a reputation as one of the most effective styles of karate in Okinawa. Higaona's emphasis on close range combat and circular movements allowed practitioners to move quickly and strike with deadly accuracy. And the fact that Higaona was an incredible teacher didn't hurt either. He trained some of the most skilled martial artists of the time, including Chojun Miyagi. Oh. I know, I said I wasn't going to mention Miyagi, but he was Higaona's most famous student and he went on to create another great style of karate called Goju Ryu. But Miyagi didn't forget his roots. He continued to honor and respect Higaona and he incorporated many Nahate techniques into his own style. Click here for a video on Miyagi. So, 
What does Kanryo Higaona's legacy mean for karate today? Well, for starters, Nahate is still practiced all over the world in Goju Ryu. Its emphasis on close range combat and circular movements has made it the popular choice for self defense and competitive fighting. And Higaona's influence can be seen in many other styles of karate, including Goju Ryu, Shotokan, and Shitoryu. Kanryo Higaona was a true pioneer of karate, a man who dared to travel China in search of knowledge and who combined that knowledge with his own native art to create something truly new and exciting. His legacy lives on in the countless martial artists who practice Nahate and in the many other styles of karate that have been influenced by his work. So if you're a karate practitioner, take a moment to thank Kanryo Higaona for all that he did to shape the art form we all know and love today. The bad boy of karate. We're about to look into the wild world of Choki Moto. He may have been rough around the edges, but there's no denying that he was a force to be reckoned with, both in the dojo and out of it. Choki Motobu was born in 1870, and from a young age, he was drawn to the world of karate. But Motobu wasn't your typical martial artist. He had a rebellious streak that often got him into trouble with the authorities. He was something of a bad boy, but that didn't stop him from pursuing his passion for karate. In fact, he often used his fighting skills to settle disputes in the rough and tumble streets of Okinawa. Perhaps the most famous story about Choki Motobu involves a boxing match that he had with a professional boxer. Now the boxer had come to Japan to challenge the local martial artists, and Motobu was more than happy to accept the challenge. The two men stepped into the ring, and what followed was a battle for the ages. Short though it was, the boxer was certainly skilled, but he was no match for Motobu's karate skill. Motobu won the match, easily, and he became a legend in the world of martial arts. But Motobu's talents didn't end with his fighting skills. He was also a deep thinker who studied the martial arts philosophy and was well versed in the history of Okinawan karate. He was known for his sense of humor and his larger than life personality which made him an infamous figure in the world of early karate. His rivalry with Funakoshi is a great example of this. So what does Choki Motobu's legacy mean for karate today? Well, for starters, his fighting skills and his sense of humor continue to inspire martial artists all over the world. His willingness to take on challenges and to think outside the box is something that many practitioners try to emulate. And his love for a good brawl, well, let's just say, some things never go out of style. Choki Motobu may have been a bad boy, but he was also a true pioneer of karate. A man who wasn't afraid to stand up for what he believed in and take on all comers. His legacy lives on in the countless martial artists who continue to study and practice the art of karate. So the next time you step onto the dojo, take a moment to think about Choki Motobu and the impact he had on the world of martial arts. And who knows? Maybe you'll even find a little bit of his rebellious spirit inside of yourself. So these were three of the most important karate pioneers. These men were true visionaries who dedicated their lives to the pursuit of martial arts mastery. And their legacy lives on in the many students they train and the styles they created. If you're into karate like me, then I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. And if you're new to the world of karate, then I hope that it has piqued your interest and inspired you to learn more about the fascinating history of this ancient art. Remember, karate is not just about fighting. It's about discipline, respect, and self-improvement. It's a way of life that can transform not only your body, but also your mind and your spirit. If you're interested in learning more about karate, then I encourage you to seek out a reputable dojo in your area and start training now. Who knows, you might just discover a passion that will stay with you for the rest of your life. And with that, We've come to the end of this video. Now, I hope you've learned something new about the history of karate and had a few laughs along the way. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day. And as always, thanks for watching.